You're listening to Punisher Waterfowls, the Union 0430 podcast. Brought to you by Real Geese Decoys, the most technologically advanced silhouette decoy on the market. First Light, the best hunting gear on the planet. Go farther, stay longer. And Ducklander Calls, tradition, education, and quality. Built to hunt. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Union 0430, episode 181. We are inching closer to episode 200. And that's crazy, Jeff. Um, Well, if you're not watching and you're listening, um, we have the voice of the Union on with us tonight, Captain Jeff Coates. Uh, But before that, um, let's get to uh, Philly is with us tonight. Craig is with us tonight. Merck is actually... On a search mission right now, there's a, I think it's a missing gentleman in Nova Scotia, and uh, pretty much all the search and rescue teams have been uh, ramped up. So Merck is on a search today. So um, good luck. Hope he's safe and, and I guess, a, a positive um, outcome to this search. So um, send big love to him. So, but... Like I've been saying, I finally got into this, Jeff, that I started saying this. Please go visit our sponsors, which is Real Geese and and First Light and Ducklander Calls. Please go check them out. Give them a like. Send them some love. Subscribe to their channels. All that good stuff. And of course, but he's here with us tonight, the voice of the Union 0430, Captain Jeff Coates. And if you are a fan of this show, then I know you've already seen... Um, a pile of his stuff because I post it on the Punisher socials all the time. So Jeff, buddy, Jeff, Craig, Billy, welcome to 181. Thank you for having me. And Craig, good to meet you at a distance. You too. But from a distance, I should say. Excuse me. <laughs> from a distance. Yeah, from especially a distance. good as long as you're at a distance. <laughs> so let's get let's get right into it jeff um actually it'll be lead into what you were starting to talk about craig before uh jeff popped on before we hit the record so jeff you got that litter of puppies buddy and i'm telling you um it makes me want to have a bunch of puppies around but i know the chaos that it causes um the good thing is that you got karen with you and uh, <laughs> the good thing is that karen's there but uh Man, I'm I'm loving watching these these little pups grow up. Growing fast, um, I think they grew today. They're all laying out in the kitchen and like, whoa, they look they look longer, they look bigger. Uh, they were seven weeks yesterday, so the countdown is on to next Wednesday. So next Wednesday, and I believe you have just the one male left, right? Yes. Yeah, just one male yeah, left. So kind of we've kind of got a a um, a backup plan on that, but okay. uh, we'll. We'll see. We'll see how it kind of all shakes out. All right. All right. But Craig, you were saying we were talking about the dogs just before Jeff come on and, and we sort of kind of stopped you there. So I'll let you run with that. Yeah. I was just saying like Phil and I have talked about this and uh, I've reached out to a few people because there's been a few times where I've kind of gotten close, closer to, you know, doing some more research and looking at getting a, getting a pup. But growing up, I never had a dog. And uh, so my biggest fear is, getting a dog and especially, you know, you spend the money on it and look into a good pet pedigree and everything. And uh, for me, my biggest concern is kind of wasting the dog too, right? Like not doing a good enough job with the training and keeping up on it and just not knowing what I'm doing. So like, that's, that's kind of the biggest hurdle for me is just, uh, yeah, kind of being afraid of getting into it. And then not just, it's not just about the money, but again, wasting a good dog, right? Oh, I don't think, I don't, I wouldn't look at it as wasting. Even, even if you, let's just say you don't even carry through with your training of of the dog and it and the dog never ever does a hunt in its life you're still going to love the thing it's still going to be part of the family so it's not going to be it's not going to be a waste not at all it's still going to become a part of your family it's just one of the roles that you had envisioned just like everybody else in our life we have something pictured for them and sometimes it don't work out right well, I, I very much, Craig, was like in that same position. Like, I never grew up with dogs. We never had them. Like, my parents did growing up when they were they were young. But my sister and I, we never, like, you know, we had the odd 
guinea pig or hamster or goldfish, but never had dogs grown up. And then I finally made, made that jump and obviously lucked out where, where the old brown boy took me. But yeah, like you just don't know. It, it, you're rolling the dice, right? It's a, you know, it's a brown paper bag. It's a crapshoot. You don't know what you're going to get. You don't know, you know, what you're going to put into it time-wise or, you know, you could end up with a complete and utter rock star that practically trains themselves or a poo eater. This is true. Yeah. Could be a poo eater. <laughs> um, you know, but I don't know, man. Like, if if it's something, I, I will tell you this, and, and Phil and um, Jeff will tell you that as much as you enjoy your hunting now, when you have a dog sitting next to you, and that dog, I could care if I even shoot anymore. I'd sooner, I just go now, I'll just run lander. If there's no room for me to shoot, I'm okay with it. Because I get so much enjoyment out of watching that dog work. And if you go by yourself, you got someone to talk to. Some of my darkest secrets I've told my dogs. <laughs> well, talk about, you know, quote, you know, quote, wasting a dog. My first black dog, I had no idea what I was getting into. And uh, it was Coot, female. Mm -hmm. uh, it was 2001 and just got, I got with the right bunch of guys. It was in, in current time, it was a different place, a different life. That's basically all I did was was trained dogs but i mean she was she was a master hunter at 26 months old i didn't force fetch her until she was 13 months old hunted her whole season, you know from eight months on and force fetched her at 13 months had somebody explain to me how to do that so i did that and uh you know i was running her in senior and master at the same akc senior and master at the same time ran her in senior to get that title just to save myself a, a master pass yeah. and i had her qualified to the master national that year and and she was Jeez. I, honestly Honestly, part of it, I know it's part of training, but if, if I would if I did a better job in training her to honor before she was two years old, she would have been a master hunter. She she liked to she did all the work. Yeah. She was rock solid except for on the honor. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, you know, like it was just right place and right time and and I got her in field trials, I got her qualified all age. So um I had no idea what I had and and you know, I yeah. I've many people tell me like your first dog is your best dog and I almost say that regarding everybody else we still have but like it, it kind of does play out that way i uh I, d I do want to throw this in before we get sidetracked but i want to keep going on this theme though but i did see a video of duker the other day and i'm telling you duker is looking fabulous I, I, thank you thank you. i took him to the vet the other day i don't know if, if you can see in the video you might notice on his front left leg he's got lower leg he's got a so it's cancer. It was we've we've taken it off before. It's really kind of blown back up. Um, he's almost ten years old, and at two years old, Karen got him as a rescue. He should have been put down, or they were going to have him put down at two years old. So I mean, he's yeah. he's he had a um, a good life, and and he does, you know, if you know him, you know him, and um, he is <laughs> he does have his moments. But he's he's actually with the pups, you know, again in seven weeks. I think there's been twice that I've heard of you know, a little scamper of like, you know, somebody crying, running away from him, which no, no I think more of like he hit him, hit him with his, his feet or his legs versus, you know, his yeah. mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's, he's doing good. So I had to get that in because I, I love that dog. Um, but, um, the one thing that, you know, when, when I started looking at, like we've had dogs ever since Trish and I've been together, we've had dogs. So I've had tons of dogs, but I've never, ever Craig had a, a dog that was for hunting. I knew nothing about it, had no clue whatsoever. My buddy, Bill, um, had a litter and he had a couple pups left over and he called me and, and said, you know, you should get one and all this stuff. And, and he talked me into it. But one of the biggest things I said to him, I was like, man, I don't have the time for a dog. Like, I don't have the time to train a dog. And when he told me you need 20 minutes a day, but every day, I laughed at him. I was like, no way. You need way more than that. And no, you don't. 20 minutes a day, every, but it, it's got to be, it's consistency is what wins the game with dog training, right? It's not you know, on Saturday spending six hours and then doing nothing the rest of the week. Um, it's not that it's, it's every day, 20 minutes. And I, I always tell people when they don't know, I say, Hey, similar, but a little less. I always say 10 minutes a day is better than two hours on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
that's a good way to look at it. I don't know. I don't know, Craig. This is going to be become. This is going to become my mission now to get you into a dog, and I will do everything in my power to ensure that that man below you do not force one of those brown dogs on you whatsoever. Just sounded like an authentic episode. <laughs> I'm just hating yeah. on the brown ones. Well, you know, Bill. Let's well, I know, at least according to my according to my wife, apparently my next one's going to be a fox. So, oh, is that right? They're yeah. nice looking dogs. Yeah, I'm going to get a get a get a fox. I'll go. I'll go back down to the states, bring another one up. Yeah, keep the gene pool clean up here, right? Yep. Which, Hopefully, which turn is, into an turn into yeah. another stud. Yeah, which which is. I I think it's admirable of you to, to be honest with you because that obviously that's a few extra dollars for you to go down to the states, right? Uh, uh, so it's it's probably a few extra dollars um, onto the cost of the dog. There's your time to you know to go down there and stuff. Because listen, I know I know your time is valuable to you, so that's three or four days depending on where you got to go pick it up. I think it's admirable of you that hey, you'll spend that, that extra money. That's a couple of dogs. Of couple balls of bird dog too yeah no doubt no doubt but it but the fact that you're you're going that you're putting in that kind of i guess commitment just so that you know when you bring your dog because like thor thor was the sire of many a litter um a few (laughs) he had a few so you know um you got to keep that gene pool pure as, as pure as you can so bringing in a dog from outside the country i think is a great idea yeah and like it's it's not hard well i like, don't know what like what shot like well, do is there it, shots that's required before you can bring a pup into no, canada now, now that i've done this twice yeah we will go down that rabbit hole okay so really it's bill of sale um which i can't i don't know I can't remember if bill of sale was required or not but obviously because you're going to the States for like X period of time, you're allowed to bring back yep. X number of dollars worth of crap. Yeah. I think, what are we at? For 48 hours, it's like 750 or $800. I have no idea, but I So if that's the case, I can buy a dog for $800, bring it back, and I'm like paying. you don't pay tax or anything on it. Right. Um, the only, the only like actual written and stone requirement is clean bill of health vet certificate. Saying as of such and such a day, this dog yeah. was was running wild, yeah. good to go, and it's had its shots. That is the only thing that's actually written in stone. Yeah, that's and I've had I've had, had all that shot, stuff. Right? Yeah. Yep, and I've had all that paperwork in my hand when crossing the border. Hey, where'd you go? What'd you do? How long are you gone for? I'm like, I went to the state to buy a dog. Mm-hmm. Got all my paperwork. How much was the dog? Eight hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, and not okay, a penny see you more. Later. And not a penny more. Yeah. We'll but, go when, with that. but Jeff, when you because I know when we bring our dogs to the States, the only thing border control wants to see is rabies. That's all they care about. As long as your yeah. dog dog doesn't have rabies, there's no issue bringing an oh. animal. And your dog into... food's got to be in a closed bag. Oh, is that right? Yeah, dude. I got grilled. One year, taking Thor down to Sandusky Did to run the Sandusky the white eight... glove? Hmm? Did you get the white glove? Was it a full cavity search? Uh, it was, wasn't a bend over <laughs> rover. But yeah, like, buddy, buddy gave me the gears. Like, I just, I got like a, it's like a dry bag. Yeah, yeah. And it, it'll, hold, hold, it'll hold four or five days worth of food. So I just pile a bunch into it. Mm-hmm. I roll the top, snap the bucket, buckle and throw it in the truck. Buddy gave me the gears at the border because it wasn't in a sealed bag. Really, eh? I'm like, bro, it's like three pounds of dog kibble. Well, I'm not taking down the White House. Yeah, it's dog kibble. Well, yeah, buddy gave me the gears. Well, um, I can I can say with confidence that it wouldn't take much, and I know this from my past life. Um, it wouldn't take much. If you were talking about one of those dry bags, that you could do some serious damage on the White House. So um, they're probably very, they are very, <laughs> they are very right in in assuming yeah. or asking people to make sure it's in sealed bags. Um, yeah. And I don't yeah. know, 
I don't know going over that way if, if it's the same, but I know like coming this side, we've got so many regulations around feed and, and pet food and oh yeah, food and stuff too. It's like I think usually yeah, we're just looking for it to be a an actual retail package or something, right? Well, so so in the case, of, so I'll use my dog food brand. So in the case of Purina, I'm I am ninety nine percent sure that. The Purina dog food that we get here is made in the States and shipped up here. I don't think there's a Purina factory. I could be very wrong. But I do believe that. So, you know, if it's coming across. Do you know yeah, where like I'm it, going with this? It, it's dog food. like Yeah, it's dog food. But anyways, Jeff. So anyway, two things. Craig is like a food inspection dude, like in his real, real time job. So he knows all about this. And then to you, Jeff, when you come across, what does, what does the border control ask you when you bring the ride dog and, and the rest of the crew? Man, honestly, since 1996, I've been coming across the border headed North and I've always made sure we have our rabies and vaccines and that type of stuff. But like, it's really never much of an issue. No. Nope. Okay. Nope. Wow. You know, knives, cash, alcohol, mm -hmm. that seems to be the more important. Cannabis, that seems to be more important things than, you know, roll down the back window and the dog poke, poked their heads out. Even when I had a, uh, you know, I used to have a six-hole topper on the eight-foot oh, yeah. bed. Yeah. Like, you know, they'd want to op open up the very back and look in. I was like, yeah, we got dogs in there. Just be careful, whatever, whatever. And, like, yeah. more of when I came back across, headed south, they wanted to see in the top or head north. It was not much of an issue. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah we, is that the one that Matt Wilson bought off you? Yes. Yes. hundred yeah. percent. Made in Cornwall, Ontario. There Cornwall. Go. Did I say it wrong? I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's Cornwall. We just call it Cornwall. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, I thought I said it correctly, but if I didn't, you know. I hear my Cornwall. wife. I hear my wife screaming at my dog. I'll be right back. Knock yeah. amongst yourselves. Yeah. Communicate. <laughs> Yeah, like and if you've ever been to, I guess you've probably never been to Cornwall, Jeff. You ain't missing anything. How did I get my topper? Could have been delivered. I don't know. I had to go there. Came yeah, across Cornwall. I, I came across uh, Watertown and headed east, and um, then I headed west. But no, uh, I'll butcher his last name. But Mike, is it the 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 Touche? Mike. Anyway, CPH. Yeah. That that was where that was where I picked it up at. Nice. Uh, yeah, like, like custom made topper. Or? Yeah, no, it was uh, CPH. They made they made chassis mounts. They made pretty much anything you want. Okay. Made, I, I don't think they're in business anymore. Um, but I, Mike was Mike was really big into golden retrievers. I say I haven't heard haven't heard of them. Well, again, this would have been like uh, two thousand four or five is when I got this. Oh, okay. And um, anyway, it was just kind of a metal, it was a, a metal shop, a hydraulic shop. It was a little bit of, you know, a bunch of different things going on. Smorgasbord. Kind of, yeah. But, but CPH, yeah. Matt, and Matt Wilson does have it. Nice. Looks like it's raining in Odessa. It is. It's been pouring all day, like heavy, heavy rain, which you're not having no rain, uh, Jeff? Um, it's, it's scheduled for, I guess, right about now, but we had a little, okay. little bit for maybe around one thirty, two o'clock, okay. um, but uh, through the night, it's going to rain into tomorrow morning. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's been raining like pouring all day, like nonstop. It's been, it's been, uh, it's been a little bit crazy. Yeah. It's been better all day too. We, uh, today I had to go walk fields and look at trees heading down to the States and of course, every time the last couple of times I've had to be out, it's like raining or there's snow and I'm trying to dig through these trees to uh, look for bugs. I'm just getting absolutely soaked. Are we, uh, we're back to shipping lumber south of the border now? I don't tend to look. Yeah, oh yeah, we've been doing lumber all along. No, I don't. We, we stopped there for a while, right? Yeah, it was just, uh, that was a while ago, just for a short time. But no, okay. I mean, everything's been running smooth for a while. I mostly, oh. I don't tend to deal with lumber. I'll look at actual live trees or logs. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so I got a, I, I did know about this, Jeff, and, uh, I'm not saying that, that Paulie messaged you. Um, shout out to Sweet Paul 69. 
Yeah, sweet balls. Did I tell you that he stopped by? Did I tell you that he stopped by the refuge at the Toronto Sportsman Show? I wanted to bring that up, yeah, because I I was going to ask you, did you see him? Because I I know I got a I got a picture text to me for sure. Yeah, no, he he. I'm sitting there like, just like I I literally took like a two second break. I was like, I'm just going to sit down for a second. And then I just, I looked up and it was him and Stacy. They were just standing right in front of me, just looking at me. It was awesome. I didn't, I wasn't expecting, I knew he was around. I just didn't, I didn't know if he was going to have the time to come down and, and visit. So it was pretty cool. Made, uh, made that week and uh, even that much more special. That's for sure. Awesome. I was texting with him today. So yeah. Um, no, he sent me a message. Um, I'm going to say it was Monday. Uh, I woke up to a to a message from him, which is never a good thing. I I hate waking up to messages because it usually means something important happened while I was sleeping. Um, they they are our video. Yeah. So uh, so anyways, I it's a message from Polly, and and I did know that PEI was in into some governmental stuff to try and get Sunday hunting uh, approved. Um, and I did know that because Brian McRae was on the show and he's the, the policy guy for Canada here with Delta, Delta waterfowl. And, uh, but anyways, Paulie said, uh, would you mind sending a, an email on behalf, you know, and just saying, I was like, absolutely. Because one of the shitty things about going, I, I guess it all depends as, as you always say, Jeff, everything is relative, but, um. It, it you know it do suck when you're paying that kind of money to go to PEI to hunt and you lose a day um because you're not allowed right that sort of kind of sucks so from a tourist standpoint um from my standpoint I'd love to have Sunday hunting happen in the PEI cuz I don't want to lose that day to go hunting well in our case Mar Maryland's been fighting it back and forth back and forth cuz we only have a 60 day season so if you if you do the you know if you pick up a Sunday that's eight Sundays in the sixty days right so it just makes it makes it go mm -hmm. quicker you know to our south Virginia has Sunday hunting Delaware I think as long as the governor signs off for this season they'll have Sunday hunting um, but with only a sixty day season it does on the calendar six days sixty days but on the calendar it does make it go quicker oh yeah for sure it does what were you going to say Phil yeah like that's sixty days like that sucks like. Like here in Ontario, we're like, was it 105, 107, whatever the max is? Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, whatever that is. I, I don't know how many days it is. All it's, I know it's is one I'm, of the not two. Get, I'm not taking enough advantage of how many days it is. I know that. Um, but I'm working on it. And we've I'll got go. townships around here that we're still holding out on Sunday gun hunting. We've gotten a bunch the last little while, including one, the next township over from me where I have a couple of properties. So. And uh, I know Brian's been heavily involved with a lot of those. Yeah. So, so um, in our case, there's three, 23 counties in Maryland, and there's three counties already that have said they will opt out of Sunday hunting. So if you live in that county, you want to hunt in that county, your 60-day season will be 52 days. You're not, you don't get those days back. Oh, so, shit. Oh. Right, so that's kind of the, that's kind of the, if you want to say there's a controversy in Maryland, that's kind of the. A controversy where three counties of the 23 already have said they're not having it. And the other counties, if it got passed, you know, the, the county you live in could, could opt out and you, well, you won't have. So you lose. What, what's the reasoning? Like, what is it? Like what, what's the, the main argument for lack of a better term? So on a lot of the, a lot of the state lands, the public hunting areas, they used to be considered to be just wildlife management areas for hunting now they're opened up to to everything. So you'll have people that ride horses, yeah. people that just want to use the state land on a Sunday, you know, to use the state land. So it's kind of that, that's that's kind of part of the um, the people that are against Sunday hunting. The proponents, they use that saying, hey, you know, these all these people can't use, you know, yeah. public property on Sunday with without being worried that, you know, and, and we're interfering with somebody hunting. Yeah, I well, I know in Newfoundland, um, where m both Mark and I are from, um, moose hunting is is one of the biggest, you know, things back there. And uh, for years, there was zero moose hunt, uh, zero Sunday hunting in in Newfoundland. Uh, and and their argument, um, 
was because of the berry pickers, actually, because there's a there's it is still a tradition that is still very much upheld back home in Newfoundland with, you know, the hunter gatherer sort of picking berries and, and I don't want to say they're foraging, but, you know, picking berries and stuff like that. And uh, and some of the best raspberry places you would have would be also the cutovers where the moose would be. So um, they said absolutely not to no, no Sunday hunting because it was taking away recreational stuff for other people. It was crazy. But I think in, they've since said, fuck those people, and they've let us, the moose hunters go for seven days a week. But So all that said about waterfowl hunting? Those counties, the counties that opt out, you can shoot deer on Sundays. Those counties, so I don't. Oh, okay. Come on. It just depends. Seriously? It just depends. Yeah, it just depends on how you want to spin it. But yeah, so those, you know, basically in Maryland, they want deer shot. On a re I don't deer hunt on a regular right. license. You want to take advantages of all the ways you can harvest deer. You can shoot fifty-five deer in Maryland. If Jesus, if you like to bow hunt. In, and I believe it's in all state parks. I could be wrong with this because, again, it's not my world. You can shoot as many doe as you want with, with a bow on, on state property. They, they want deer. They want deer gone. And then that, that 55, I think nine of them can be sick of deer. Jeez. So it's anyway, like you, fucking squirrel hunting. They just go, go to town. You can hunt deer on Sunday. You can't hunt waterfowl on Sunday in Maryland. That's all. That's insane. 55 deer. Like... The population can withstand that. Well, they want, obviously well, it doesn't because they want the numbers called down, right? So Coming from experience, I know which Michigan can withstand it too. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. There are a lot of deer in Michigan. Most of them are in the ditch on the highway. Yeah, you're driving deer everywhere. I don't want to say. The, I don't the DMR doesn't, they, you shot enough deer, they'll have a special, like a late muzzleloader season to get <laughs> to the, to the field again, so. I don't want to sound ignorant in my knowledge of the state of Maryland, but how much of Maryland is like a metropolis, Jeff? Like how much is rural versus city? I mean, you have that you have that Route ninety five corridor that runs, you know, Philadelphia into Maryland, yeah. Happy Grace, Baltimore, Columbia, down into Washington D.C. I mean that that's that is a heavy. I, I can't give you the numbers, but that's a right. heavy related area right um you know the the county that i grew up in harford county i believe that they're just the population is about five hundred thousand people in that county worcester county here where we currently live is twenty three thousand people the eastern shore is definitely less less dense populated it's that it's that 95 corridor right that is, is very very populated and then once you get west of that you know it kind of you know goes all the way out to the allegheny mountains um, you know, again, it becomes farmland. It becomes very unpopulated. So uh, it just depends on really where you're, you know, where you're, where you're at. Right. But I'm like currently looking on like my Apple maps of like the state of Maryland. And you have um, like this, you have this like obscure finger that heads west. Yeah. But it's kind of like one of the, one of the little sayings is, is, you know, Maryland is like American miniature where it's, you've got the ocean where we're at. Yeah. And, not that you know, not that the Allegheny Mountains or the Rocky Mountains, but you go from the ocean to the mountains, right? I think the right. forty five hundred feet, I think, is the, the the highest elevation in Maryland. But it's kind of got everything geographically. It's yeah. got everything that um, you know that you'd find in, in in the United States or North America. Wow! Oh, that's cool. No, I was just thinking, like for for say the M and R to be so concerned over the deer act. First off, we're spending way too much time talking about deer on this show. But um <laughs> but uh so if the M and R is saying, you know, you're allowed this amount, uh then I would think that there's a fairly large uh deer hunter population in Maryland, right? I would think so, yes. But I thought there was a lot of waterfowl hunters. And you show up that first Saturday of gun season at a Wawa or a farm store, yeah. And you really see, you really see how many deer hunters there are. Really, eh? Yeah. Because that's that's why I was asking if it was mostly metropolis area or or a rural area, because there's got to be a place for these people to hunt, right? Like if you're if, if the deer are, are a problem and you want them gone, then people need need the space to hunt, right? But you said twenty three counties, like yeah. 
So just just kind of north of Baltimore City is um, Baltimore County and the area of Lock Raven. There's at least three, if not four, reservoirs that supply water to Baltimore. And the one area they wanted to open up, they, they said the deer population was too heavy. So they wanted to open up you know, to bow hunting. And it was I was there more of a spectator just to see kind of the pros versus the, the antis kind of thing. And where I want to go with this is that the state stood up and told the residents that live around these the reservoirs that don't want deer hunting. They said, well, we just want you to know at 2 a.m., we pay somebody to drive through your neighborhood with silencers to shoot as many deer as they can while you're sleeping. We throw them in a truck, and you never even knew those deer got shot. So why don't we open it up to – to sportsmen, people that want to hunt, people that want to eat these, you know, eat yeah. deer, yeah, eat the meat, and let's. And they were going to bow hunt. They weren't going to shoot guns. They, they wanted to open up to bow hunting. Yeah, and, the, and residents were very much in that area. Were very much against that. They said, "Well, hey, just FYI, at two a.m., we pay a, a company a service to drive around and shoot as many deer as they can while you're sleeping." That's insane. I, Craig, I want that job. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a pretty cool job. Um, right? I've often wondered this. And by no means am I this great hunter with where I just stack piles of meat in my fridge. But am I not allowed to donate my wild game to a food bank? Am I allowed to do that or am I not allowed to do that? Not here. Be no. Yeah, you know, we don't have the programs like they do in the States, uh, like Hunters for the Homeless or whatever it's called or something like that. Um, now is it only changed the last bunch of years where we could even use it for like wild game dinners and things like that, or donate yeah. razors and that. But as far as food banks, I, I'm not sure. That's You know, and I don't know. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's a very smart reason why you can't do that. Uh, you can't donate to food banks, but it seems like an awful, a waste, right? Let, Cause let's not pretend that everybody that buys a hunting license um are ethical hunters and they they harvest every bit of meat that they have or, or whatever right and some they just bring it home throw it in the freezer gets freezer burn they get thrown out anyways in the trash um but what a wasted res or a wasted chance to really solve two problems right so a hunter's got some meat that obviously his family doesn't want to eat but he likes to hunt and you have homeless people. Why? Why couldn't we give our food to our wild game to a food bank or even a homeless shelter? Maybe not a food bank because I don't know. Maybe that. Maybe that's the draw the line. Maybe to a shelter. Maybe if it's a privately owned shelter, maybe they can do it. I don't know. It's because you're making too much sense. That's why we don't do it. Mm, so. I was, I was going to say, is that kind of like your carbon tax? Oh Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, and, well, and you would have got it. Well, well, I know that's it. what I was just going to say. I'm like, you would get it too with Polly because Polly must go on some rants over that. Well, it's it's funny. I was at my tax guy this morning to sign off our papers and for him to hit the send button. He's like, oh, and your wife's getting, I guess because she makes lesser of the two of us. Yeah. So she's getting nice a flex. Nice flex, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, my, my tax guy was like, yeah, she's getting a $1,120 carbon tax rebate. I'm like, oh, what you mean is I'm getting my money back. It's <laughs> well, not you're a not. rebate. It's my yeah. fucking money. Well, and you're still not getting back to equal to what you paid in, despite what he no. make, tries to make you think, right? Well, it's, um, it's funny. I was in. Anyways, boys, if we go down this Trudeau hating fucking yeah. rabbit Sorry. hole, we're going. I'll reel, I'll reel us back in. So <laughs> back to the uh, waterfowl and food banks, back the old dogs and lawn darts. The yeah. old community we lived in, uh, and it did. The, the front pond did have a very heavy population of local birds. Uh, one one August, they rounded up three hundred geese, killed them all, and supposedly, supposedly. Those all that meat was donated to um, homeless shelters. So we here we can do that. That's okay, good. I, I've got a, I've got a. Craig, can can you look into that? Yeah. Can Please. you make changes to our laws? <laughs> can, yes. And, <laughs> can, can, and can you and can you and Brian McCray come up with something? <laughs> yeah. Well, even the waterfowl changed even more recently because I, I remember growing up, um, wild game. I think at one point we could use it for like banquets. Mm -hmm. and then we yep. could. Now we're back to that. But then even when they put that in place where you could use wild game, you still couldn't use waterfowl. 
because it'd be in federal. Uh, but then it was only uh, years ago, I think, where they changed that, like with geese and stuff as well. I think that was one of the regulation changes a couple of years ago, along with some of the transportation regulations and that. So I think like with geese, you could start using them for things like fundraising dinners and stuff like that. But again, yeah, I think food banks was still, for whatever reason, off limits or food banks or like soup kitchens and stuff like that. But I think back home, because, uh, you know, community... I'll, I'll call them community dinners. So the community moose dinner and stuff like that, right? Where you would, you would have to come in and you'd have to, you know, you paid for your plate of food. Now that was allowed. And I think this is how it goes. That was allowed because if you were a not a not for profit, you could do that. You could sell walled game as your meal and, and for a fundraiser for not for profit. But if you were trying to do a fundraiser for profit, then uh yeah no go and even now because it's like it's i think it mostly runs through the local health departments so at municipal level or county level and uh i think like for us like we like when our hunters and anglers club does it like i think there has to be signs up or there's you know a disclaimer on your ticket and stuff like that saying that it's you know hasn't been inspected and things like that okay um jeff i'm i'm you know i gotta apologize because we got you on the show and all we've been talking okay. about is it's, it's bullshit, but I will. I do have to bring some attention to my to my hoodie and my hat for those that can see. So this this Phil's gone now, but I was meant to tell this to Phil. So this was supposed to be a sort of kind of surprise for Jeff when he come on the show that I was going to be wearing a Molly's hoodie and a Molly's hat. So fuel your adventure, yeah, fuel your adventure. So. I, I go on Molly's website and I'm looking, I'm looking at, I'm looking to buy a hoodie. So I'm going to scroll and throw and I'm looking to buy a hoodie and stuff. And, uh, and I was like, Jesus, everything's sold out. Like, that's weird. Everything's sold out. Like they're a fucking big store. Right. And I just, I thought it was weird. So I typed up an email to, to Molly's and I just said, Hey, this is who I am. Um, I'm looking to get a hoodie. I, I want to get a hoodie because my friend's Jeff Coates and he comes on my podcast. Sometimes I like to have a hoodie for the next time he's on the show. I said, please let me know when you have some stock in. I'd like to order one. Hit the send button, walked away, went about doing my stuff. Ten minutes later, phone rings. Mr. Coates. I'm like, huh. I was like, well, weird. Me just sending an email to Molly's and Jeff's calling me. I'm like, hey, buddy, what's up? What size are you? I was like, what? I was like, and Jeff goes, what size are you? I was like, extra large. Why? And he's like, well, Chicky just called me. He got your email. And I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. This was, first off, it was supposed to be a surprise, and you were not supposed to know anything about it. And I was going to buy the freaking thing. And then, uh, but Molly's doesn't ship to Canada. That was the, that was the other big thing. They don't ship to Canada. So, um, I had to get my uh, my New York State address in so that they could uh, that they could send me over. So they sent me over a hoodie and a hat. Thanks, Chicky and the crew from Molly's. David, I was hoping we could do some sort of some sort of stitch or something. I think that's what the kids call it on on TikTok, isn't it? Isn't it? Actually, Jeff, you know more about TikTok than all of us combined. I bet you. All I know is I hunting videos. My style video is not. <laughs> it's not kosher. I can tell you that. Yeah, you know it's that. not. It's not kosher at all. Um, but the puppy videos do well. Oh yeah, I bet they do. I bet yeah, they but, do. Uh, but but uh, bird, birds getting shot does not go over very well. I had a I had a red red remarks quite a, for quite a while in my account. So um, not even um, not even birds being shot. Your dog retrieving a dead bird because um, I got I got. A little slap on the wrist for that. Just and that was during uh, a like a, a hunt test, so it wasn't even hunting. It was just a, a dead bird from the hunt test that she brought back to me, and yeah, that got me in trouble. What's that? Crazy the stuff that is allowed. Well, yeah. and and yeah, so every time it's not now because uh, the kid. Anyway, anyways. Um, I was always getting these, <laughs> I guess this will tell you what I fucking watch all the time, but I was getting all these like 
40 and 50 year old women on my TikTok all the time, you know, fucking shaking their ass or, or doing whatever. And I was like, all I wanted to do was watch video because my dad had TikTok before I did. And, uh, and he used to watch all these old, like Harvey Corman. I don't know if you know who these comedians are, but Harvey Corman and, and, uh, Don Rickles and dad used to send me these videos. So that's what I wanted to watch on TikTok. But then I got all these fucking women, um, all the time shaking their ass. So I, I just stopped, I just stopped using it. And now I don't even, I've got a, I've got an account, but I don't even know what I do. I, I post nothing on it. But again, back to your point, sidetrack there. Um, but back to your point, uh, Craig, yeah, the, the stuff they allow on that channel that a woman and people, whatever do, but yet a dog bring them back a, a dead bird. No, that's the that's the limit that they that's the line they drew in the no sand. No bueno. Mm. That's the line they drew in the sand. It's funny I find the the uh, algorithms too. Like for me on Instagram, I have two different Instagram accounts. So I've got just my regular one for me and family stuff, and uh, and it's just normal everyday kind of stuff on there. Like especially for the suggested posts and reels and stuff. But on my hunting related one. It's uh, must have a certain view of guys who hunt because it's like that's the one where it's like you go into the search bar and all the videos are it's just women nonstop, right? All the oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, this this guy's a hunter. He must this is this uh, what he wants to look at all the time. But yeah, my personal account not so much. Yeah, yeah. I don't I have just, TikTok. Yeah. Well, I've got it, uh, and lately the only thing that's been on it is Jeff's is is your videos, Jeff. Like, that's the only thing I see now. Like, any notifications I get um, is, is just your videos of the pops and uh, the uh, pinky, is it? Is that the... Is pinky, the man. One? Number nine. <laughs> well, there's, and then there's these two pops that sort of kind of hang out together all the time, right? And they're, like, they sort of kind of fuck around together and... and yeah, and, like, and, pinky and uh, the green collar sage that J Jeff and Junior are getting, they, yeah. they seem... They seem to kind of pair up a good bit. And then every, I call it spar, and everybody else just kind of, the females and the other two females and males, they just kind of sparred. Some days, you know, somebody's, one's on top, next day the other one's on top, and yeah, yeah. they're just, they're, they're steady at it. It's def definitely cool to see, like, the pups interact and the different personalities and whatnot. It took, like I said, they were seven weeks yesterday. It took to, I, I would say, obviously we've seen them since day one, but really, you know, like five and a half to six weeks old. Six weeks on, you can really see personality up to that. They just, you know, they're just kind of little blobs. You know, they they like, you know, they feed all the time and you know, they move around some, but yeah, they just didn't, you know, now, now especially last week, you really can see who they are. It's like It's like being on welfare, just eat and sleep. Yeah. And, and get to hang out and do and have fun. Like, no work whatsoever. Just run around, play with your buddies. Yeah. I got this. <laughs> this is only the third litter of all time that I've ever done. The first two, Karen was not involved in. And it, again, much different, much different surroundings. Here we have, you know, basically, you know, it's poured concrete floor everywhere. But pretty much first thing in the morning, man, the pups get let out of their, their pen. And they, they're like free range puppies all day long. They're, they like think they're real dogs. Everybody goes off and, Oh really? Yeah, I mean they just they just go everywhere and you know inside and different directions. Yeah, really they do. Everybody's kind of got their place where they like to go and and um but they they act they think they're real dogs 100% because they're all day long they're loose. What age uh like so like if I'm coming in as somebody looking at a dog what, at what age are you kind of selecting what pup you want because like you're talking about at 5 weeks on they kind of start developing that personality but they're usually spoken for before then, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, in Maryland, we, technically, we can't let them go before before eight weeks old. Um, in the past, I, you know, I, I would get a dog and maybe set like again, like they're seven weeks old. We've had enough of them; it'd be nice to see them you know, move on, kind of thing. Uh, but Maryland law is eight eight weeks old. Um, but now, I mean, yeah, people Jeff and Judy picked their dog way early, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Before they really, I, we even said, "Hey, you guys want to just hang out a little bit? Let's see what they're we'll see what they're doing." You know that kind of thing, and and a fellow from Ohio, he's like he's watching on Instagram. I want blue. I want blue collar. You know, and he, 
sight unseen kind of thing. Like, man, like, you wow. sure you don't, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, we can send you, let's FaceTime, let's, let's get you some, nah, I've seen them a lot. We're good. We're good. Um, so it's that kind of thing where, where, um, and I, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm kind of being a little bit backwards because the fee, we, we did this breeding. I wanted to keep a female and the female, I picked her pretty quickly, you know, just again, but I was with them every day too. That's right. Um, you know, that, that kind of thing. But, but, you know, I, I was pretty quick. Well, I was leaning, I was leaning towards a certain dog. Um, and we kept saying, Hey, at four weeks, let's wait till they're five weeks. Let's wait till they're six weeks. And I'm like, yeah, that, that's, that's the one I want, you know, kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it really to, to this between, I would say six weeks on, at least with us, you can really see our, our group, you can really see kind of the personalities come out in them. Is that um, just see up here online? It always seems like there are like people have already picked them out well before that. So yeah, I was just wondering about kind of getting to see their personality a bit before that. Well, like for, and Phil, you chime in on how you've done it too. But for me, you got a number. So you got a number on where you picked, right? So, so F, F the 20th of April is the day to pick dogs. Then everybody that's buying a dog shows up and the first guy, number one, gets the first pick. He he gets to see all the personalities and pick. And like when I pick Lant, I think I was like seventh at, at, of a litter of nine. Um, yeah, I was seventh before I picked Lander. Um, and actually, I didn't even pick her. It was Trish and Kaylee that picked her. Um, I didn't pick her. So yeah, like that, it was a number for me. I don't know, Phil, you? Well, I had two very different experiences. Oh, so picking oh. Thor, um, Thor I picked off of the retriever training forum. I got on to his breeding and like there was literally just, there was two puppies left that they were trying to get rid of out of 11. I think oh, it was, wow. it was big litter. So I spoke to my breeder, Laurel, and we literally had like, Christ, I was on the phone with Laurel for easily a good half an hour. Had like a bit of a phone interview. She's like, just tell me about yourself and what do you do? And it's not. So we went through the whole thing and she's like, you're getting this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. And like she picked Thor for me out of him and his brother, Monk. Um, um, now, yeah, but again, that, that would go right back to what Jeff was saying, where he's with him all the time and sees, yeah. she would see, she would see the, the, the personalities of them, yeah. right? Right from, and plus, right from day one. There was only two left, so you get A or B. <laughs> um and then with uh zeus i gotten onto the breeder he's out like the very west end of iowa and i had first pick of mail so literally okay everyone everyone was waiting on me to show up get my dog so then all the rest could you know start picking but i showed up Corey pulled i think there was three or four males he pulled all the boys out let them Fuck about his yard. He had a couple clipped pigeons, so you know they could interact with you know live birds and stuff. And Zeus was like beyond the birdiest one. I'm like that one. Let's go. Yeah. Here's your money. Yeah, take it and go. Take it and go. Um, but now when we when Bill Kennedy and I just bought this last puppy from David Butler down in PEI, Jeff. Excuse me. Um, Bill sort of told. Um, David, what he wanted, right? We, we want to, you know, uh, uh, we want somebody with some personality, a little bit of an attitude sort of kind of deal, right? And and David was the one that picked Lily, and uh, oh yeah, she's got she's got the swagger and the attitude. She's uh, I don't know, she's a, she's a sixteen year old teenage girl right now. I would think that that's that's the <laughs> attitude that she's got right now. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Lovely. Oh yeah, she's she's a handful. So, but yeah, so then I guess for us, um, we told the breeder just like what you did, Phil. That this is what I want, and uh, this is what we'd like to have. And then the breeder picked the dog because, again, they're with them all the time, so that they get to know the personalities, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with, with with the scooter dog we got, Karen sent me the the um, the information on the on the litter. And it said there was one female available. And it's Mike Barabee, who we got rye from in Maine. He happened to be in Georgia. So I called him up. I was like, hey, man, can you tell me about this one female? And he's like, no, 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 no. Like, there's a female available. Like, nobody knows what they're getting. He's like, I, I you know, he says, what do you want? And I, I told him, hey, an energy dog. 
doesn't have to be the alpha, but I definitely want an energy dog. He's like, yep. I'll pick one for you. You know, we, we never saw the dog until she got dropped off here at the house. Yeah. And she's been an awesome animal, right? Yeah. Uh, flip side to all this, uh, Alex Abraham, a good friend of mine. And way back in the day, we trained daily when I had Coot. Um, if you remember the old Avery sporting dog logo with the dog jumping, that yep. was his dog, yep. Jackson. I took the picture of They They did trim some of his undercarriage off a little bit, but – yeah, that that was that was Alex's dog way back in the day. It was a brown dog, um, and uh, we, you know, Alex and I have been going back and forth. And that that the Mac Man project that Karen and I had for a little bit that was that was one of Alex's dog. Alex says, "Hey, I want to tell you a story." I went to get Mac, or I went to go get my dog. He says the the breeder had been with these dogs for eight weeks. Says Alex, "This is the this is the dog you want right here." He says, "I was there for two hours." He's like, "That's the dog I want." He's like, that dog's freaking crazy. He said, the one she told me, it's a field champion today. He's like, so, like, who, you know, I, I thought I knew better when I did yeah. it. Two hours, I'm with the dog. She's been with him for eight weeks saying, that's the dog you want. No, I want this one. And he's like, that's what I got. So, you know. Yeah. Crapshoot. It, well, it, it 100% is a crapshoot. Um, you know, and and then, you know, Jeff, you've trained a lot of dogs. And, and Phil, you, you've trained dogs, too. Um, you know, uh, I know that the dog has to have, uh, a, it has to has a good pedigree and, and, and show that there's some smarts there, right? That, that it has this willingness to learn, but for every, I'll say bust when it comes to a dog where a dog just didn't work out, but he, a lot of it was probably the, the approach of the trainer. Because I'm, I'm not saying that there isn't some dogs that just don't work out, and, and I know there is. Um, but I think a, a, a trainer that rushes things could do a lot of damage to a dog, too. I really well, I, do. And I can attest this firsthand from having Zeus and Thor. Like, you got to cater to that dog. Like, Thor, Thor I could train with a 2 by 4 yeah, and you'd yeah. be like, yep, I, I, I done fucked up. My bad. Okay, let's yeah. work through it. Zeus, I raise my voice, and he's done. Yeah, yeah. So, well, night, and, night and day different dogs. And, like, I look at when I first got, was going down this rabbit hole, people were like, oh, lardy, lardy, lardy. So I had the lardy program, and I went through. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I can't follow this shit. This is of zero use to me. Where mm -hmm. people thought it was, like, the gold standard. It's not. This isn't the 60s. Like, there's been improvements to training programs since then. And I actually blended two yeah. programs to get through with Thor and it worked out just fine. Like you need, you got to cater things to yourself, your learning style and ability to the program and what works for you and your dog together. Don't force, you know, don't force a round peg into a square hole, right? Like, right. you know, you got to, there's no, it's not black and white. Like you got to kind of play within the lines a little bit and flex things and, or like you're just setting yourself up for failure and disaster. Yeah, I agree. I th you know, you can't handle. I think there's there's some uh, baseline stuff that, regardless of dog, of regardless of which dog it is, or, or you know whatever. Um, I think there's some baselines that you have to hit, but for the most part, you, you yeah you have to roll with the punches and. You may have to, like, I can tell you, and I don't want this to turn into a, just about my dog, but like for Lander, um, if I yell her name or if I'm loud when I release her from, from the line, like it ramps her up. So I literally whisper her name when I send her from, when she's on my side, I literally just go Lander, that's it. Because if I, if I say it with how I'm talking right now her brain just does this flick. Oh, it's go time. And, mm -hmm. and then it's just, fuck. I know what I'm doing. You don't know what you want me to do. And she just doesn't <laughs> listen. Yeah. She just doesn't listen. She just flicks. Sounds like a teenager. Yep. Yeah, oh yeah. 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 You know, everyone's different. We've spent a lot of time talking about dogs on this show tonight, which is, which is always a good thing. Cause I love talking about dogs. I like dogs. I gotta admit, fellas, I have no idea what time we started this episode, so it's I don't like know. Seven o'clock. I'm yeah. I'm lost myself. Yeah. 
I have no idea what time we started this show, but I'm th- I'm guessing we're getting close to that hour mark. And, um, yeah, I think we're pretty much there. Yeah, I, I, I think... will gladly do a shameless plug for First Light. Oh yeah, do it. I ordered I ordered pants from First Light on Tuesday. Thank fuck. Like sometime in the afternoon, I ordered these pair of pants. Well, today's now Thursday. They're going to be at my house tomorrow. Yeah, they're they're pretty fast. Yeah. So for those who are thinking by first light, their shipping is ridiculously fast, faster than Canada Post throughout, like within Ontario. It's just absurd. Yeah. But yeah, order well, first they, light. They use FedEx, but the good thing that they do is is all the shipping fees, the duties, everything's collected at their end. So all so, there. So FedEx doesn't need a signature. They don't, you know, they can nope. leave it at your door. They're not know. holding your parcel ransom yeah. with a debit machine. Yeah. They drop it and run. Um, you know, I did I I wrote this down when Jeff brought it up at the beginning of the show and I totally forgot about bringing it up. But I think hopefully we still got a pile of people listening. But 25 years, Jeff. 25 years you've been doing this. Since 1999. Man, that is great. 25 years. It just means I'm old. Well, you can... I don't know, man. Like, there's some longevity in that. Like, that's not a... You know, there's not a lot of dudes that stick around in this life... In your lifestyle for 25 years. Especially with the ups and... With the ebbs and flows of, of life and the way everything rolls out. Yeah, we, uh, quite often, uh, some friends, we talk about that kind of thing. We're like, hey, you know, this, this person showed up and they're, you know, balls to the wall, go, 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 go. And like three years later, like, what, where are they at? What are they doing? Like, like fell off the face of the earth, right? Yeah. You know, it's the kind of thing where like life is life and things change and, you know, it, it kind of, you know, every, every, it's all relative and, and, and yeah. things are different for everybody, but it does kind of, it does kind of ebb and flow like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think, I guess it was just kind of maybe at the right place at the right time, especially with, with, um, you know, the internet and getting myself out there in the beginning kind of thing that, that, uh, you know, again, I have Donald Hughes to thank about, thank for that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just kind of, it it is what it is. And I've had a, a family that supports what I do and, and, um, you know, I, I did try to do the, you know, I don't know, whatever the 40 hour week kind of thing. And like, I just didn't in another lifetime, mm-hmm. it didn't work out for me. And and this is really, you know, something that's really kind of, kind of just really fit, fit who I am and what I, you know, what I do or my ideology, if you will, I guess, or, yep. um, you know, I'm not lazy. 100% I'm not lazy, but at the same time, like I get up super early and often I stay up late, but like, I, I'm just not, yeah. you know, 40 hours is not my deal. I don't know, man, like 25 years to be, and and let's face it, like, and I'm not taking anything away from any other person or the way they hunt, but listen, 25 years of beating up on the North Atlantic, buddy, um, that's not, that's not for the faint of heart, you know, so, so congratulations, dude, like, thank you, still, and, and boys, you can chime in on this too, but still to this day, like, People will still talk about, I can't believe that you have Jeff Coates on your show. And I'm like, dude, like, he's like the best, friendliest person you're ever going to meet. Just fucking, he'll, he'll answer you back if you shoot him a message. Um, just not the guy. Just, yeah, I was, but still like 25 years of doing what you've done and, and all the ways and all the different avenues that you've taken Jeff and, and the names like from those hunting forums way back in the early you know, they're, uh, I guess, late 90s, right? The late 1900s, as the kids call it. <laughs> um, but the late 90s, early 2000s, all those hunting forums and, and, the, and the, the days of the DVD videos that, that got, that was the only way you got to see, you know, you and, and your crew on the, on the Chesapeake and then, you know, guys like Sean Stahl and, and, and all those guys, right? So it's pretty impressive. It, it Congratulations, buddy. 25 years is, is pretty impressive. Thank you. Thank you. We never had, we were always on DVD, but like, honestly, the few years before us, I mean, it was VHS tape. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like, say that to somebody today and they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I know. Beta. 
That was <laughs> hey man, that was a that was a status symbol where I was from. You had a VHS machine, like we didn't have one because mom and dad just thought it was a waste of money. But um, we didn't have a VHS, but mm -hmm. our friends did, and it was it was a fucking status symbol, dude. Where I'm from, you mean the, those early duck videos, if you will, you know the, that it was VHS tape. That's what that's what they came out on. Yeah, well, and, and I know. Uh, I know Phil brought up Mike Lardy there, and I'm pretty sure that's all they done with the Mike Lardy stuff is they took it from VHS and put it right over on the, on yep. the DVD. So if, I, if I was in the outdoor studio, I actually there's a I have a little pile of books sitting there, yeah. and I actually have the Mike Lardy. When you said that, I I was I went to reach to my left and it wasn't there, but I was going to hold up the Mike Lardy workbook and show you the <laughs> handbook. The handbook. Yeah. I I may have I may have a photocopy of that here somewhere. Yeah. There, there's many um yeah. yeah fellas um jeff 25 years man impressive um Thank crazy you. crazy impressive um but we are at i'm pretty confident we're at the one hour mark so we can uh we'll call it there so we'll do a quick around the table and uh and call her a night craig to you my man oh, just good chatting with you guys and uh jeff good to kind of meet you face to face and I still have to get one of those green wing from you. I messaged you a couple of years ago and uh, Damien was supposed to go down. We were trying to figure out how to get one up oh, here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, still have to get one of those from you. But yeah, congrats on 25 years. And Thank you. Thank you. looking like you're slowing down anytime soon. So I, yeah. I put, put eyes in uh, 27 green wings this afternoon. So nice. They're, they're uh, maybe with my belt. Um, <laughs> good chatting with you. Good. Thank I, you. Yeah. I will say this, though, um, if you are looking to do a hunt with Captain Jeff Coates this fall, you better fucking confirm real soon, because I'm pretty sure you're almost sold out for next year, right, Jeff? Eight, eight days, so yeah, tw let's look at the 20, 25, 26 season to get, to get ex the exact dates that you want. There you go. There you go, Philly. Jeff, again, always a, a pleasure and honor to have you on the show, and if for those that have, like, seen Jeff and know Jeff and people are thinking about getting into waterfowl guidance like Jeff's been doing this for 25 years and look at Jeff he's only 42 and look what it's done to him <laughs> all kidding aside Jeff I wish it's it's amazing that you, you've been you've been at this for 25 years wish you all the best in your your 25th season and you know maybe see you get another 25 who knows oh cool, thank right. you thank you yeah. not to go off on a tangent but what real quick? What's what's the average age of a lab? Quick, I mean, just throw a number out. Ten, oh, eleven. I, I would I would say nine, nine, ten years old. Okay. In my my experience, the ones I've had, I I told Karen the other day, it's about a, actually about two weeks ago now. In my mind, twelve years old, mm -hmm. right? Like I freaked out, Karen. These puppies, when they're twelve years old, do you know how old I'll be? And it, it's it put me off off on a on a side <laughs> tangent that has not been good for me. So. <laughs> well, and now that you brought that up now, because it started with Phil, and now I've got this tangent. So I want, Phil, remember this, remember the fucking video of Jeff when he was at that outdoor show and he jumped in the pool with his waders on? Yeah. West Lake, Ohio. West Lake, Ohio. I've got the fun, because if you want to see a young spry Jeff Coates with the, you know, not a gray beard. Because I I think it was just a a big long goatee then actually. Um, I shaved it off. I shaved it off every year then. So yeah, I got to uh, find that video and put it up because it was funny because like there was remember fellows were like grabbing at him. Don't do it. Don't jump in. <laughs> Get out of my way. <laughs> so, so if your waders fill up with, with water, do you float or do you not float? I don't know. You float. You float. Well, buddy, you you certainly you jumped in that pool, no problem with your waders on, and and while well, you're here to tell it, tell about it. So, um, Jeff, to you, buddy. Last word. Ah, I appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you very much, Craig, Phil, Damien. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, a pleasure being on as always. I do try to keep up with you guys. As I, I texted you, Damien, the other day. I mean, definitely during during the off you know off season from duck hunting. I definitely tune in every Monday to see what's going on. Uh, during the season, I may be a little laxed, but mm -hmm. like you know, ducks, I definitely, you know, especially sitting out in the carving room, I, you know, six or seven hours there, I can burn up a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of podcasts. So I definitely 
I definitely tune in. I tried to, like I said, uh, and the other day I did finish to the end. So you yeah. got my, you got my response there. So <laughs> yeah, I did get your response and, and I do, before I end it, I do have to ask you, um, how much more comfortable is it in the decoy room now compared to the friggin' trailer that you had? Well, first off, it's much larger, but, yeah. but it, was a, it was a 20 foot enclosed car trailer, yeah. um, at the other, at the, the old house. And yeah, it's nice. I have, I have, I've never had air conditioning before. So I have mm -hmm. air conditioning, I have heat. I, ha I have hit, had heat in the past, but definitely the air conditioning is nice. And um, it's just the kind of thing where it's just, it's, it's, it's more, it's more formal. It's more permanent. And um, yeah, I can kind of sit out there and, and um, almost say get lost, but got a window to the outside. I got a big garage door on the one side. I've got, again, uh, fresh air and or heat and air conditioning and we can we can sit out there pretty much 365 days of the year so it's much much nicer than anything i've ever had awesome well everybody um this is episode 181 of union 0430 podcast jeff as always dude um i believe now and brian ellathorpe you can chime in let's see if you listen to the end um i believe uh the ball is in your court jeff Coats is one off on you right now, buds. So uh, I'll leave I'll leave that to you, Mister Ella Thorpe. Jeff, as always, buddy. Thanks for being on. Thanks for all the support that you always um, you always give us and and come on and and put up with us and all our tangents and and the whole bit. Like I appreciate you more than you'll ever know, buddy. Um, everybody, surround yourself with good people. Um, don't be douchebags. Big love and see you next week. Salut. Salut.